This is our Fidelides uh, production facility uh, where we take uh, tobacco plants that have been infested with aphids, uh, release Fidelides in the cages off to my right here, wait for the basically the larvae to become visible to the naked eye which is about two or three days away from uh, when they're ready to pupate and then what we do is we fool them by tipping them over top of a water slide. Uh, because these are native to pretty well all of the northern hemisphere and they're actually very active in British Columbia, they have to be able to survive overwintering in wet conditions so they're actually capable of being submerged for up to 24 hours uh, which allows us to use a water slide technique to collect these. Uh, what's really nice about Aphidolides is that it doesn't care what species of aphid you have it's very effective against basically all the species. We used to say for many years that it wasn't effective against the woolly aphid, uh, but our experience has shown us that it in fact is quite effective as a preventative because it'll go after the juvenile stages and the smaller stages. It won't uh, readily tackle the woolly uh, uh, exterior of the woolly aphid, but if we do it preventatively, we can actually control it that way. So it really does that. It goes after all the other species of sucking insects. We've used it for controlling whitefly outbreaks in poinsettia populations, and we've used it for controlling psyllid uh, outbreaks in peppers. Uh, so the technique is basically we put them into the vermiculite to let them pupate. We ship them, hopefully, in a pupation form, although if they emerge en route, that's not a super critical thing. But we like to avoid any damage that could be caused by severe shaking during transit. And so what we ask our customers to do is basically wait for the uh, Fidelides midge to emerge. It looks a lot like a mosquito. At twilight is the optimum time, but you can go any time of the day. They tend to be nocturnally active, so right at sunset they're most active. We take them to the release point and release them. The, uh, they'll fly up. They find honeydew by the sense of smell. The adult doesn't have a... A uh, strong mouth part, all it can do is basically lick the honeydew from the aphid excrement. Uh, what they do is they lay their eggs in the aphid uh, uh, area, and it's the larvae, which uh, we have, you can see on that leaf, that do the active predation. In most um, systems, we release them, in a, in a greenhouse system, we like to release them preventatively. Uh, these can go from one release point per hectare and find single aphids. So they're extremely effective at preventing establishment of aphids. The surplus that work their way outside of the greenhouse becomes a nice buffer zone and will overwinter and start reducing the overall population of your aphid input for the next couple of years. In an outdoor situation, we like to wait for an aphid hotspot, release the appropriate amount so that there's enough food for the, aph for the aphidolites to eat, allow them to cycle, and we basically get a tenfold increase in population from one release point. So if we release 250 in, in a rose area, uh, in about a two weeks time, we'll have 2,500. And in another two weeks time, we'll have 25,000. So we can very quick, quickly populate an area as long as there's enough food for it. And this actually works very effectively in outdoor applications for usually a period of up to about five years. Uh, our pecan orchards that we work with down in uh, southern U.S. get a, usually about five years before they have to reintroduce this product. So it's a very, very rugged uh, product, very versatile because it goes after all species, and it overwinters in every climate, including Quebec.